and welcome to Raz Reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing King Arthur Legend of the Sword. Directed by the one and only Guy Ritchie, this is a modern retelling of the old story of the boy who pulls a sword from the stone known as Excalibur. But in this case, it's not a boy, it's a very handsome man called Charlie Hunnam. <laughs> into this film without any expectations because I actually didn't see the trailer or any promotional material for the film so I didn't know if it's gonna be good or bad so I just went in and I have to say that I found it pretty cool and pretty enjoyable later on I found that it wasn't received well by critics yeesh I really think the critics are a little too harsh on this one because it's a typical stylistic Guy Ritchie movie and if you like that stuff and it works for a lot of people then you will like this movie it's not the greatest movie of all time and it definitely should not be taken seriously but it was a fun ride that I enjoyed and other people that watched the film with me also enjoyed I thought it was a pretty cool style and it's basically what you would get if Snatch took place as an episode of Game of Thrones like Snatch of Thrones Snatcheros Game of Snatch <laughs> A song of ice and snatch. A snatch of ice and fire. It's starting to sound dirty. <laughs> so if you're into Guy Ritchie's style and you like his films, and if you like high fantasy and sword and sandal kind of movies, then you will like this movie. Otherwise, this movie is probably not for you. So let me tell you the things that did work for me when I tell you about the top three things that I liked about King Arthur Legend of the Sword. Number three, the cinematography. This movie looked really good. I mean, it was shot pretty well, and it had this very nice look and feel to it. It looked medieval, but it also looked like it takes place in this fantastical world. I thought the production design and the colors were really cool, and I thought that the action sequences were shot pretty well, especially chase sequences where people are running in tight spaces. There were a lot of cool shots, and there were a lot of cool trick camera movements that I thought worked very well for the movie, so all in all, the cinematography was pretty awesome. Number two, the fantasy element. I like that this movie was really high fantasy, and usually high fantasy films, especially in recent years, honestly, they've kind of sucked. Here, this was a fun film, it was full of action, it was high octane, but at the same time, it went really far with the fantasy elements. You have giant creatures, and you have all of these mage powers, and magic, and dark magic. It was really cool, and I did not expect that at all, which I found to be a very nice surprise, because I like fantasy elements. I felt like I was inside a D&D game the whole time, and I thought it was really cool. The number one thing I liked about King Arthur was the editing. The thing that elevates this movie and makes it really cool, other than the dialogue and the London slang, is the editing. This film does editing acrobatics. It's like the editing Olympics. It has so many super cuts and jump cuts. It plays with the timeline. It doesn't tell the story in a linear way. It goes from a conversation to what happens later and then back to the conversation and then what happened before in a flashback. And it's all intertwined in such a crazy manic way. It's absolutely relentless. So you're just sitting there and you're receiving all of this information, cuts, jump cuts, montages, and it gets exciting and it gets really cool and it keeps you interested and it keeps you engaged. This style of editing is not expected in a fantasy style film because these films are usually slowly paced and they have this epic feel so this really felt unique and made the film more special and a lot different than other films in the same genre and it also helped a lot that the film was edited to an incredibly awesome soundtrack which just made it such a fun thing to watch now this movie was cool but it definitely was not great so let me tell you where it went wrong when I talk about the top three things that I didn't like about King Arthur Number three, the CGI. The CGI was inconsistent in this movie. Sometimes it was really good and sometimes it wasn't that great. I felt like they had a bunch of money and they kind of spent it all on a bunch of sequences that looked really awesome. And then the other sequences that still needed CGI, they were like, eh, let's just kind of get through these real quick. There were sequences, especially towards the end of the movie, where the film starts to look like a video game. And that's not a good thing when that happens. You kind of disconnect and you feel like you're watching something that's made by computers. The number two thing I didn't like about King Arthur was the fact that it was a PG-13 movie. This film needed to be R-rated. Not all films need to be overly heavy on violence and blood, but a movie like this where it's swords and magic and battles and fighting and fantasy, you need blood, you need killing, you need the fight sequences to look a little bit more dangerous than they did. I think the PG-13 really hurt this film, and I think it would hurt it in the market as well and in the box office. When you start thinking about cool medieval movies that we like from our past, like Braveheart, Gladiator, they all were pretty bloody. And of course, now we've kind of been spoiled with Game of Thrones. That show has desensitized us so much that we can't really enjoy films that are so clean where you don't see people getting stabbed and hit when the camera cuts away the moment someone is attacked or or the moment their throat is cut so i think that really hurt the film and made it a little bit weaker and didn't pack the punch you needed the number one thing i didn't like about the movie 
was the story. Fact of the matter is that the script is really weak and the story is not that strong. It's just that Guy Ritchie's style and the elements in the film elevated that script from what it was. This movie felt like it was a bunch of really cool sequences that are super enjoyable that were patched together by really weak story elements that just connected things. They just serve to be a pathway that takes you from one cool sequences to the other. Just a flat line. You didn't really care that much about everybody, so the stakes were pretty low in terms of storytelling. And the story itself is pretty basic. It's kind of the sword and the stone, but with adults instead of a child, and without Guinevere and without Merlin, who were very sorely missed, by the way. Another weakness in the story is the fact that it was rushed. There was a lot of information given in a very short amount of time and a lot of things didn't have time to sink in. I felt like Guy Ritchie shot a three hour film that was edited down into a two hour something movie. And a lot of things that should have taken time, there was like sequences where he goes through these big challenges and he does these really difficult life threatening things and they were gone by in like a few seconds. So you didn't really feel them, you didn't really have time to absorb that information. So sometimes I felt a little bit overwhelmed by so much information in such little time. So that that's why the story didn't really stay with me, it didn't land well. So all in all, I really enjoyed this film and I thought it was a really cool, fun ride and I don't think it's as bad as critics are saying. It's a popcorn movie in the cinema, you go, you watch it, you have a good time, you don't take it too seriously, and it's pretty unique. And when you compare it to other films in the genre that have come out in the last couple of years, it's definitely at a higher caliber, or Excalibur. <laughs> I'm glad I saw it, I had a good time, and for that reason, I'm gonna give King Arthur Legend of the Sword a 6.5. So, have you seen King Arthur? Did it work for you? Do you agree or disagree with me or with the critics? Let me know in the comment section, and as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and let me know what you'd like me to review for you next. See ya!